Well, hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. What's up, man? It's Wasi again. All right, so we got um, we got a little intriguing uh, video that we're going to be doing today. A lot of questions being asked, a lot of uh, speculation out there, so on and so forth. Me personally, you know, uh, well, anybody that knows me, I don't really endorse a lot of things, uh, especially when it comes to like electronics, man, because sometimes stuff comes out and it's garbage. When they first come out, everybody's jumping on the bandwagon and uh, talking highly of things. And, you know, I always play the backdrop until I actually get my hands on the item, you know, test it out, see what's going on. It happened with the Behringers. Like everybody was like, yo, these iNukes are amazing and this and that and the other thing. And I'm like, you know, threw them on the bench and took a look. I was like, not really. You know, so it just took a little bit of time before everybody started to realize that, you know, it was a lot of smoke and mirrors. So same thing with the, um, you know, the, uh, I call them the crab groupings, the fake lab groupings. Uh, they're all right. They play extremely well when they're working. Uh, the only uh, the only problem with those amplifiers was the fact that, you know, if you had a bad day and you give them a dirty look, they would just stop working. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they were, like, extremely sensitive. If you looked at them the wrong way, they just cut off on you. You know what I mean? So, obviously, I never really endorsed those because they were in the field feeling like crazy. You know what I mean? Uh, but this is a different scenario, right? Um, we got a CVR D3002. Now, I've been watching this company for a little while, watching their amplifiers or whatever that they came out with. The smart thing that they did is um, they didn't try to copy another amplifier and then slap their, their name on it or, or just try to make it identical to something else. They actually took the technology that was already in existence and, you know, incorporated that into the manufacture of their own amp. You see what I'm saying? So they created their own product, but before they came to market, uh, it appears, you know, and I say appears, they, they did a good amount of research and they they spent some time putting this amplifier together. So, you know, I, I said, you know what, let me do a side-by-side, -side, run them on the bench, whatever, whatever. Uh, the power output of these CVRs is extremely good. Um, my only sticking point with any product is the uh, the reliability and, you know, the capability of the uh, the product. So, as far as reliability is concerned, man, these CVRs are not failing. Uh, this is the first one that I'm looking at, you know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, everybody that knows me know that this is what I do. I do electronic repair, power soft, lab grouping, any amplifier that's out there, I could repair it, uh, old to new. But haven't had any real CVRs come in the shop because they're not really failing. Even this one that failed, it's not really the fault. Hold on one second. It wasn't really the fault of the amplifier. You know what I mean, uh, this one basically got hooked up to some some funny power and it kind of damaged it. So I wouldn't necessarily say that the amplifier failed because anything that's out there, if you hook it up to the wrong thing, uh, it's not going to work. You know what I mean, it's going to it's going to have an issue. So this one got a little bit of bad power and that's what caused it to go down. Um, but, you know, it wasn't it wasn't like a uh, catastrophic failure, like some of the amplifiers and items that are out there. If you have anything go wrong with them, they like they just burn up. The whole thing just burns up. But that wasn't a case. It hit a section of the power supply and took that down. But that was it. So I guess what I'm trying to say, I'm looking at the build quality, and you guys can see it here. The build quality of the CVR is extremely good. I mean, extremely good. I mean, I've I've taken this thing apart, looked at it top to bottom, and um, it's extremely similar to one of the amplifiers that I rated very highly, which is the PowerSoft. This is a K20, by the way. So this is a K20. I mean, this one is also in for repair. But if you look at the build quality, I look at the actual amount of spacing between the boards, how neat the components are. You know, they're stacked at the same height. You know, like some of the old uh, fake lab groupings, man, you would have parts leaning to the right, leaning to the left. You know, they look like they were doing a cha-cha slide inside the amp. You know what I'm saying? So when I see stuff like that, I don't think very highly of the product. But this is a CVR guts right here. And as you can see, man, it's extremely neat. It's well put together. They're using good components, you know. So, um, you know, kudos to CVR, man. They came out with a good amp. Um, the amplifier has a different uh, fan topology. They don't use the, um, you know, the flat fans like what's being used in the K series. They're using the fans that are similar to what's being used in the X series. Um, the X series uses these type of fans, the uh, the stand up block fans. 
And uh, this one has a total of uh, five, which is a good amount of ventilation. So the actual airflow in the amp is going to be very good. Um, they're being used in Carnival. Carnival was a testing ground. I took a step back and just, you know, waited to see what would happen. But you had guys that were using them in Carnival playing double 21s, um, you know, at two ohms and beating them from, you know, Juve to Carnival back to back. And they didn't blow. So I was like, you know, that, that raised my eyebrow right there. I said, well, wait a minute. None of them blew? You know, so I said, all right, let me take a closer look at these guys, these amplifiers or whatever. So real quick, I'm showing you the inside of, of uh, both amps. This is the K20, right? Looks nice, looks very clean, but this is an Italian amp uh, versus this is the CVR, which is a Chinese amp. And the difference is obviously the price. The Chinese amp, you could get this amp for like about a grand. This one, if you were to buy it retail and not buying it as a uh, export amp, it's about five thousand dollars. So that's a huge difference in price in the price differential. So that's the that's the first thing. Um, the other thing that I noticed, I have two boards here. This is out of a PowerSoft. You know, you can see the board is um, you know, very well made, very clean. You know what I mean? The uh, the solder points and everything is is you know it's done very well. So that's what you would expect from an expensive, uber expensive Italian amp. But then you go to the CVR board here. This one is damaged, so don't look at the dark stuff. That's just the damage that it had. Uh, you look at this board. This board is also very well made, very clean, uh, very well put together. You look at the back of the board, the solder points and everything. I mean, it's, it's, it's impeccable. No, you know solder over here solder over there bad solder connections whatever so the amp this board right here i would say is on par with this power soft board but at one fifth the cost for the amplifier so you know that's something to really take a look at because the amplifiers are out there they're they're playing well they're not failing and they're they're doing what they're supposed to do uh you look in here you see there's a lot more spacing right here versus the power soft and that's for obvious reasons uh, the spacing here is because there's no display. Um, just to give you a heads up, uh, the display in a lot of amplifiers is always the weak point. Uh, same thing with the crowns and, and the power soft. The displays typically have issues after a certain amount of time, and they could cause the amplifier to go down, even though there's nothing really wrong with the amplifier. But you don't have a display. You can't see what's going on. You can't control anything. So that's why, um, you know, this was a smart move by CVR. They don't have a display in here. And if you think about it, the uh, PowerSoft X series, they don't have displays either because they, you know, it's kind of like, you know, a lesson learned type of thing. So uh, that's the physical mechanics of both that. So I would say they're basically on par with each other as far as build quality is concerned, uh, components. Uh, if the one thing I want to point out, this is the power supply for the CVR. This is the power supply for the PowerSoft K20. You see, the power supply in the K20 is much larger. The CVR's power supply is smaller, right? Now, I'm going to show you the difference in what CVR did versus um, uh, PowerSoft. On the CVR amplifier, the power supply, it has um, uh, 18 capacitors. So these are the capacitors right here. So it has a total of 18, right? So if you were to count them out, you got a total of 18. You go all the way back here. And these guys over here, you got a total of 18. You look at the power soft power supply. That one has a total of 54 capacitors, right? So you got this bank right here, all of these guys right here, and all of these caps right here in the power soft. So this right here is what holds your, your voltage and allows the amplifier to charge back up every time you drop a bass signal or whatever. It's called slew rate, which is the amount of you know time it takes to recharge all the caps every time a signal you know starts to deplete the capacity of the um the amplifier's um charging. The slew rate is how fast it can recover. So that's what um you know that's that's what actually holds the actual charge for the amplifier. Now, the reason I'm pointing this out is because CVR did a little bit differently. PowerSoft, they put a lot of their capacitance in the power supply. CVR, it's not a lot of capacitance in the power supply. But what I like about what CVR did, they put a huge amount of capacitance in the output channels. So if you look at this is the output board 
of the power supply, I mean of the, uh, the power saw, sorry. So this is the output board. You notice it's a lot less capacitors on the output board. The other thing you'll notice is it's one output board. That one output board plays both channels, right? So on the output board of the, um, the PowerSoft K20, you have 16, right? 16 capacitors for the entire output board. And that's for both sides, eight per channel. So that's the output board of the uh, PowerSoft. You got 16 caps. What CVR did, which is something that I like, they split the output boards. So if one channel goes down, this board is what you, you would change or repair. The other channel goes down, this board is the one that you would change or repair. If you notice on the CVR, this one channel, right, this output channel, which is what plays your speakers, this one channel has 56 capacitors. 56. Once again, this is the PowerSoft K20. This is the output board, which the capacitance is shared. You got, you know, eight per side or whatever. This is 16 on the output board of the PowerSoft K20. Right on the CVR D3002, this is one board for one channel, and it has 56 capacitors. That's what's going to hold your charge. And when your your uh, amplifier is beating the heck out of some 21s at two ohms, this is what's standing up to keep it going. You know what I mean? So this is one board, one channel. This is the other board, the other channel. I like that because if one board blows, you take out that one board and repair it. You still have this other board over here. With the power soft, it's a little different. If one channel blows, you take out this whole board, but now you've you've basically removed both channels, the right and the left. So you whatever channel's blown, you still have to take out the whole module. With the CVR, if this one blows, you just take this one out. If this one blows, you just take that one out. So that's one of the other differences um, with the CVR that I kind of liked. And um, just just to wrap it up real quick, now the differences in the power, you got the 3002... 3002 right here at 2 ohms you're at I'm just trying to make sure you can see that 7140 watts right now the difference is you go to the K20 which is here at um at 2 ohms on the K20 you're at 9000 watts so you have a differential in power yeah but i mean do you need 9000 watts to play 418s you know what I mean? Or 221s, not necessarily. And um, when you look at the price point, you got, you know, 5000 if you're buying it retail, you know, 3000 and something, something, something if you're buying it for international. Um, but, you know, that's basically what it is. So if you have the dollars to spend and you like the Italian make or whatever, whatever, hey, you know, go ahead and go with the K20. But, um... With an amplifier that's basically able to do the same thing, same build quality, everything else, you know, and the reliability is there. That was my main thing when it, when it comes to some of these Chinese amps, if they're reliable. But um, this amp is reliable, man, and um, I'll endorse it, you know, which is something I don't like to do. But um, after seeing the product and what it can do, the way it's made, uh, yeah, I give a thumbs up to the CVR. All right, so anybody have any questions, hit me up. I know there's some questions rolling on the um, the live, but I'm not able to answer while I'm talking, but I'll try to answer them once I get off of here. All right, so this is Wasi, uh, side-by-side, PowerSoft, CVR. CVR looks great. The build quality is great. Same with the PowerSoft. Only difference is the price. All right, have a blessed day. Peace.